Now to the discussion on the rules governing retirement accounts that we mentioned earlier in the program. The White House, through the Labor Department, is expected to announce proposals that will tighten retirement account standards and close what some see as loopholes in existing laws that allow brokers to skirt, in some people's view, their so-called fiduciary duty. Will this help or hurt invest investors? Kenneth Benson is president and CEO of the Security Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association. He opposes the change in the rules, but Micah Hauptman, a financial services counsel with the Consumer Federation of America, is a supporter, and Michael Farr is back with us. Welcome to all of you. I know this is going to be a lively and interesting conversation. Uh, Kenneth, let me start with you. If I really read between the lines of your group's position, you seem to be saying uh, that if, if brokers are required to put their clients' interests first, those brokers will not be able to stay in business and will not be able to serve clients. Have I got that wrong? Uh, really, the, 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 what, what, you, what you have here is if the DOL pr goes forward with a rule like they tried to do in 2010 and establish this new standard, then you, you would have to move these accounts from a, a traditional brokerage account where most people have their accounts in a commission-based account into a into a, a wrap account, a fiduciary account, which is more expensive. So what would happen is for the higher balance accounts, they would be paying more for services they don't want to buy. And then the real problem becomes on the lower balanced accounts. And by volume, most IRA accounts are in lower are, are in lower volume balanced accounts. Those are not wouldn't don't make economic sense to put into a wrap account at any fee, so they really would be left without any access to any advice. They would be left on their own. So you that's really what the problem is with the proposal as we know it from 2010. You say this would be these these uh, charges would be higher cost accounts. I'm curious about that because it, it would seem to me that what that what this rule would be aimed at doing would be to uh, avoid the higher cost uh, accounts uh, that that sometimes gets sold to uh, retirement account owners. You see what I'm saying there, they, that they, they're driven into high commission accounts or, or accounts or to, uh, funds, for example, that have higher expenses. Well, uh, it's first of all, a very competitive marketplace, but keep in mind, a, a, on a commission-based account, you're paying a commission on a, on a transaction by transaction basis. On a, on a managed account, where this would drive many accounts into, you're paying an annual fee which over time is far more expensive. And, and you're paying for services that, you know, people do like managed mm -hmm. accounts where they're getting an ongoing service, mm -hmm. where in many cases a discretionary account where the advisor is making trades on your behalf, mm -hmm. as opposed to a buy and hold account where the, where the investor has said, look, I want right. to buy this stock, I want to buy these funds, I'm going to hold it for a long period of time. I just want to pay for the transaction. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hauptman, uh, why don't you jump in here and uh, tell us what you think. Uh, would it raise costs uh, to go to this standard to the point that many would no, not be able to afford it and that many brokers would be, uh, would be driven out of the business? No, no. And Mr. Benson gets a number of things wrong. So first, we have a retirement industry in which uh, financial professionals are allowed to hold themselves out as trusted advisors, but not comply with the standards that tradition traditionally apply to those in a position of trust. So you have uh, largely brokers who are allowed to steer their clients into high cost, low performing investments that don't serve their clients' best interest. They serve the financial advisors. They make the financial advisors a lot of money. And that's because the, the rules that apply to retirement investment advice haven't been updated in 40 years and they don't serve the modern financial landscape. And so they don't apply to rollovers, to IRAs, to IRAs. Um, and um, it costs investors a lot of money. And the academic evidence suggests that the conflict of interest advice costs uh, retirement investors anywhere between six and seventeen billion dollars a year. So, and so, so basically, you're, what you're saying, if I'm understanding you, correct me. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hauptman, is that is that the advisor can't wear two hats. He cannot be a commission salesperson and also have the client's best interest at heart in all cases. It just doesn't work. No, that's not what I'm saying. And um, so Mr. Benson said that commissions won't be allowed. That's just not true. 
uh, the DOL, first of all, hasn't proposed a rule, so any uh, analysis about what the DOL rule is going to look like or the impact that it's going to have is just speculation. Uh, we want the DOL to propose the rule, to update it, to uh, mm -hmm. close loopholes in the rule so it reflects the modern financial landscape and that investors are better I wanna, protected. I want to bring also, in a I want to bring in, uh, for, forgive me for interrupting, I want sure. to bring in uh, Michael Farr, who is in this business. He advises clients. He's, he's a money manager. I do not know, but I assume you follow what is known as the fiduciary standard. Michael, jump in here and, 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 and speak to uh, the guests. Tyler, I think it's ridiculous that we're still having this debate. I think it's ridiculous that the securities industry has been able to protect and maintain a suitability standard as long as it has. The difference between a fiduciary and, a suitable, and the suitability standard, on, uh, for, as an example, on a mutual fund purchase, when a broker recommends a mutual fund, it, all it has to do is be appropriate for that client, that a conservative growth fund is okay for that client. He's not required or she's not required to recommend the lowest fee fund. So I could, if I'm a broker, all I need to know is that fund's suitable and I, if it has a 4% load, uh, charge fee as a part of it, I can recommend the one with the load rather than the no load. That's a suitability standard. As a fiduciary, as a money manager fiduciary, I have to recommend the best deal for the client. And if I am telling the client that I'm going to give them the advice in their interest, I think I'm obligated mm -hmm. to do that. I don't know how the industry has maintained this position of a suitability standard this long. I think it undermines the credibility of the industry. And I agree with you. It does put you at a conflict of interest when you are right. there to give the client advice and you're trying to recommend something that's going to pay you better. I want to get back to Mr. Benson. You get the last word. Well, great. Well, first of all, let me say, first of all, it, it's a mistake to say that this is an unregulated area. This is one of the most highly regulated areas of finance. There are different channels by which customers get products. There are different channels by uh, how they're regulated. And the, gro and the brokerage side is the most heavily regulated channel there is with the greatest redress opportunity uh, to the client. But the most important thing is the, the customers, the investors, have been choosing with their feet. And they overwhelmingly choose the brokerage model because it is more cost mm -hmm. efficient to them. And so they want to be able to buy the service they, they want. All right, gentlemen. And, and this rule is gentlemen, we have to, rule. This rule is gentlemen not. I've got to leave it there because we're out of time. I think our Facebook page is going to light up on this. Mr. Benson with SIFMA, Michael Hauptman uh, with Consumer Federation of America, and Michael Farr. We'll come back to this, I promise.